we just tackled Mr. President in a very unique way. Find out what we did and how it turned out here on Legendary Tactics. Now the concept that I had in introducing this game to you guys was to actually run it more like a role-playing game where I'm the GM or DM or whatever you want to call me and bring the story, like allow the die rolls to tell a story. Yeah. And But it's a story you influence. That's so right. like a lot of role-playing games. Um, but, but Mr. Within, President with is this based... this interface, essentially. Yeah, Mr. President is made out to be a solo game. It is. Okay. It is. Now, so Interestingly, if I could rewind for a moment um, and take this back to where I think the inception came from, I may be putting words in your mouth here. Um, I picked up the Avatar role-playing game a while back, played it with these two hooligans. We had a <laughs> pile of fun. We didn't play yeah. that on camera. That was just uh, just for fun. And I think both of you were surprised at how fun it was to just yeah. explore, have me sort of um, <laughs> take you through the narrative. And so giving this game a chance to sort of exist in that kind of um, the nether regions of role playing, yeah. I think, was a really cool idea that you you took from maybe that, that well, Avatar experience? What I took from the Avatar experience, because I've played other role-playing games and Dungeons and & Dragons years ago and stuff, but what I liked about the Avatar system was you had a set of actions and you choose That's right. from a menu of actions. Yes. So it's not like... So yes, you have a lot of freedom to choose what you want to do and everything, but it was from a menu or it was gu like That's right. kind of guided by that menu. Uh -huh. And that actually what is what I kind of brought over to this because I'm, I mean, obviously you're dealing with a large menu here, but mm -hmm. but the idea was mainly that you are choosing from different actions, and it's like you were when you were playing, you'd roll the dice and let us know success or failure, or what happened, right? So that was kind of the 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 idea behind this game. I thought, well, what if you could port that role playing experience to a solo game where one person takes on the role of a DM. Um, dungeon master, game master, whatever, uh, and and provide the story with the board game as an interface. And I know that there are things like tabletop RPGs and so forth. So it may not have been a completely original idea in, in many ways, but I think it's original in the sense of being applied to these types of interfaces, these types of games. Well, where I think this really succeeds is when you have differing levels of engagement with rules and game mechanics. Because you are heavily, heavily invested in uh, deep strategy and deep, deep mechanics like this, and I am not. Yes. But I love <laughs> storytelling. And Cax, I think you're somewhere in the middle between yeah. NATO and I. Yeah. yeah. And so for you to bring this experience to a narrative level for me, yeah. just made me feel like I could get into a game like this and really appreciate it without being bogged down by rules. Yeah. Right. Um, and just before I, I turn to you, there's just a couple of things that I feel are necessary as part of this whole thing. So number one, obviously the, the game master person has to be really familiar with the game, has to know exactly where to, in order to minimize downtime and make sure everything flows smoothly, you got to know your stuff. Yes. Um, that's true of any role-playing game as far as I know. Um, and, and probably in, in the same vein, making sure the players have a good idea of the actions. Like, I'm sure if mm -hmm. we did this again, we could actually get more into the role-playing because you're not worried about, oh, what am I going to do? That's right. You're, like, just pulling from the menu more automatically and you're just saying, oh, I'm going to do a speech at the UN because that's, yeah. you know, and if, if you know your stuff too, I think you could actually get really into the narrative because you're not bogged down by... What what happens next? Oh yeah, we move that. I got to check the rules on that, right? Like yeah. it, it takes you out of the experience. You so. gave us so much agency, though. That you know we're navigating around the board, and we just say we want to do this. How yeah. do we do this? Where do we do? And yeah. it just felt so fluid. Yes, like my experience was like through the roof. Like it was yeah. just. Cool. I just like when do I ever want to play a two hour game and then go for another two hours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never. Yeah. Like this is a very rare occurrence for me, and that's because of how you delivered the game. Yeah. So, Cax, what was your experience yeah. like as my my vice as president? Yeah, yes. And you yes. played more like you know just you and I just yeah, and then not role playing to just like playing, but the more game. like back and forth, a like cooperative kind yeah. of a approach to playing the solo version of it, the solo game. Um, so there were two. There's sort of two different. Pre uh, Planks, I'm kind of, I've been listening, as I listen to you, that I've been thinking in my head. One, did it work? Do you think this approach worked? And two, you each played a very different role in this game as you played it. Mm. Yeah. Did each of you enjoy yourselves? Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, I think yeah. hugely. I yep. know Flash. I can tell by from what you've said, you, and you're just your tone. Like it's hands down. But Nate, I'm curious yeah. about your end because your yeah. end was all the heavy brain yes. burning lifting. Yes. Right? And honestly, the, my right? brain is a little bit burned. I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. right, a bit. He yeah. really kept it yeah. flowing amazingly. Yeah. Like, amazingly. But I'm curious, like, did you enjoy yourself? Like, and I, I think at one point I could really tell you did, but I just wanted to. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But I'll tell you, it's interesting. I was actually chatting in the comments section of one of our videos with uh, one of our viewers about this, not directly, um, but we were talking about refereed games mm. and, uh, in his case, he was talking about uh, an Avalon Hill game, which involves, uh, n you know, naval warfare, hidden movement and all that sort of thing. And it really it's something that I've actually had some ideas on playing with you guys where uh, you'll each take a side and I will yes. I will navigate all the fog the of war stuff yeah. and let I'm you in. know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Flash is already in. You know, <laughs> and so, yeah, you need to know the game mechanics to some degree. But Midway. The, the, yeah, Bismarck. Midway, for example. Yeah, Bismarck, Bismarck, yeah, some of these older that, games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but uh, you know, and that concept has always intrigued me. I remember reading in the, in the general magazine years ago about a game called MBT and they did a, uh, they did a scenario where they had the two sides and they had a fog, um, mm. kind of rule where you could only see so far. Right. Right. So they were all moving around and they had their objectives, but they had no idea when they were going to like advance and suddenly move right into the. <laughs> you know, into the, the range kill zone. of, yeah, kill zone <laughs> that had been set up for them right, or something right, like right. that. Yeah. I just thought, wow, that's like so unique. It's so cool in board gaming. Why aren't there more mm -hmm. refereed games out there in the marketplace? Like, why isn't that, why, I know, I, I understand solo gaming against the game system, but why not have more games that can be refereed like right, that? Right, well, right, we right. did Star Wars Rebellion on this channel where I was teaching you two to play. And yeah. I had a ball just because I love the game and I want my two friends to experience and love the game too. Yeah. I didn't mind standing back and saying, okay, here are your options. Oh, now you get yeah. to do this. And it just, it makes the game that much more fun for you to not worry about the rules. Yeah. And for me, just to have you guys experience it was, yeah. and have a good Now imagine experience. Star Wars Rebellion but where you have limited intelligence as to where the empire is or where the, or, you know, does right the referee, yeah. does the referee so, know it all though? Board game designers out there, maybe you want to use this and yeah. go and build a game where you have a three player game. Two of them are players. One is a referee yeah. who maybe has some sort of asymmetrical <laughs> job um, to do with the yeah. fog of war. That could like, be cool. Just don't assume that everyone wants to be a player. Some people are very content to be a game master yeah. type referee uh, you know, and, and well, there were two moments in our <laughs> game that I really thought shine uh, like from from your reactions that it really stuck with me. One flash, <laughs> and I know some of it was over uh, a little bit of the theatrics, <laughs> but we did roll a one, and all that flash and I really knew was that one was good. That's yeah. amazing. Right. Yes. <laughs> and so it was like we were we were trying to take a war out or something, and we and we rolled we rolled our one, and flash yes. flipped a wig. Yeah, like some of that was, <laughs> it was dramatic. So good. But you know what? I loved it. I know I, I felt a little buzz. I was like, yeah. yeah. I was pumped, and I know Flash was pumped too. Even yeah. though it was over the top pumped, he was pumped too. It was not over the it top. Was, it was perfectly. <laughs> he was looking at the upper camera, giving it the. <laughs> anyway, so that was your moment where I really thought this is shining for Flash. The second one was you, Nato, when actually we rolled a number, and and Nato to himself muttered, "Oh, okay." <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, right. And your tone there told me Nato's into this because yeah. even he's getting kind of surprised and puzzled yeah. by it. So I thought, yeah. on two different, very different levels, yeah. this game, this experience was working. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that was really cool. And Super I just cool. enjoyed the whole thing. I was, I was just loving all of it. So it was great, yeah. too, for me. But uh, And what's really cool is that we walk away from this game and all three of us take something different away from it. For yeah. me, I take the story, right? Yeah. I, I love what happened and how it happened. And um, I would love to keep playing to find out where the rest of the story leads. Yes. Uh, what did you two take away, then? I think the interaction with the game. I love that. And the interaction with... And just watching how the game unfolded with Nate telling the story, with us making those decisions, with me trying to convince you, with yeah. you you know, being the ultimate arbiter. All, all, the whole package. As VP, did you find you were less of a player in the game? Or did you still feel really involved? No, because I was into the actual narrative myself. <laughs> like yeah. I, I was immersed. And you, you were so, swaying me all over. You're like, no, 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 no. We have to take care of this. <laughs> right, and, yes. so. right. Yeah. No, no, I was very immersed myself, and it was more just like, because it was just contributing to the, the story. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And did you take anything from um, NATO? <clears throat> well, again, I think just to reiterate <clears throat> my feelings about the, there's, I think there's a certain satisfaction with running a successful game. Yes. And having other people enjoy themselves. 
And, you know, hey, I think that there is a spot in the board gaming community and maybe I'm just not aware of it. Maybe mm. it's out there. Maybe there's some things. I've that, never seen it. Yeah. No. But yeah. if but if if people out there know of something like, well, like Dungeons that, and Dragons then, would be the closest. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and if you have, yeah, I don't know. I don't find that game all that satisfying, to be honest. I find you know it's okay, yeah, but yeah. I find it very slow. <clears throat> yeah. uh, if you have any games that would that would play well with a referee, please put them in the comments. Yes, I'd love to hear about those. Yeah. So, and don't forget to like and subscribe and do all that stuff below if you get a, t- a chance. Yeah. And let us know your thoughts. You know, just in general. Absolutely. Now get out there. Get gaming. Be legendary.